and oh, it's a big game. I'm gonna show you how to eliminate humping. We have white dog is a humper, the other white dog is a sometimes humper. Let them in, one is intact, the other is not intact, then we have a female in the mix. Humping. You might look it up, you might hear a lot of different things. Here's how you eliminate humping. You punish humping. You operantly punish humping. You mark and correct. There's no positive reinforcement way to eliminate hum humping. They will say, well, don't let your dog around other dogs. Oh, lure them off when they go to hump. No, these are adult dogs. I am not doing redirection when there is a unwanted behavior. There is no pain involved in my mark and punish. I'm going to, when they hump, and we gotta just get them in the mix, Carly. Um, when they hump, I'm gonna clap, which is a marker and a shocker. Then I'm gonna grab the culprit and I'm gonna sit them down and then I or you are gonna say, go do it again. Go hump the dog. I'll just keep doing this until you see the behavior start to drop off. Then you know it's working. And also, if anything else happens during this session or during this video, then I will address it on the video. Come on, guys. No humpers in the mix. You guys don't feel like humping. Someone hump somebody. Someone hump somebody. Okay, so this guy's being too much for her. We can't have that, okay? They're both accosting her. He has not humped. He has not been too much being Bogey, the white one. This one is biting at the neck, so we're gonna let him know he can't do that. Now we're gonna let him go and we're gonna say, go do it again. This is basically, this method is for any behavior we do not like. I grabbed him, I touched him, like I'm palming a basketball under the neck, and I held him there for a while because I think he was super obnoxious to her. If you wanna become a dog trainer and help people with aggressive dogs, think about the Beckman coaching program. I'll leave the link in the description. If you have aggressive dogs, whether it's aggressive towards people, towards other dogs, or dogs within your own home, I have the Beckman aggression program. I'll also leave the link in the description. They're both monthly. I do lives for both of them. You get tons of videos on how to become a dog trainer or help, how to help your aggressive dog. They are, in my opinion, the two best programs out there for those two particular things. Links in the description. You have three dogs at home, it's time to act right because you are now in the mix. You are the boss. Maybe you don't accept rough play. You don't accept humping. You don't accept uh, chasing. It doesn't matter. You just figure out what you don't like and then you mark it the incorrect behavior and you correct the incorrect behavior. It's not rocket science. You're gonna let a lot go. You're gonna get let 90% of things go, but you're gonna pick these few things. And for this session, I was, it was humping, but then it became this guy being too much for her. These dogs can do the right thing or the wrong thing. The right thing is gonna get them continual play. I am not gonna cruise around here and go, oh, bogey, you haven't been humping. Bogey, you're so good to not be humping. Like, he does, oh. Now, maybe she's not comfortable right now. She's actually fine. Maybe she's not, so I can correct the behavior if she's not comfortable. He's into her. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. Okay, she snapped at him. She's not comfortable. Ah, I missed. So this, this, I get it. So she's saying she doesn't, I'm gonna change the session at this point. Because of the constant between the legs, she's not comfortable with any of it, okay? She's, do I think, leave it. Oh, oh, he knows, sit. Sit. All right, I'm gonna break what just happened down. I figured out how uncomfortable she is. I kind of let stuff go and her trying to get between our legs because I was like, um, I was like, God, we gotta see the behavior. I'm trying to find the criteria. I'm trying to be very clear with humping is, is the criteria for punishment for this guy or for a correction. We didn't see any humping. So then 
I changed the criteria because of her uncomfortableness. I said, okay, I'm gonna mark and correct or mark and punish anything that she's uncomfortable with. Then I saw her get un uncomfortable or he did something. I clapped and then he avoided. But then if you noticed after the avoid, I was gonna go get him, but then he came to me. I'm not gonna punish a voluntary come to me. If, if I have to track him down and grab him, I'm gonna punish the behavior. But then he came to me. So I then let up a little bit and I said, okay, you, you can, oh, here we go. I don't think she likes this. And, oh, it's a big game. It's not gonna be a big game when I get him. It is, it's gonna be the opposite. Just work on, just the camera. Okay. It's the opposite of a big game when I get him, okay? Now, let's see if it's a big game again when I get this dog, okay? Let's see how this dog interacts with that dog. Let's see how this dog interacts with me after that. Oh my gosh, Joel, you were so mean to the dog. He's an adult, new, un, intact male dog who's harassing this dog and thinks life's a big game. That hurt zero, zero pain involved. It's time to get serious with your guys' dogs. They're not little babies. He is a full grown adult who is doing something I don't want him to do. When your dogs are doing this, it's time to get serious, guys, and forget all the nonsense of what you've heard about. You don't think dogs are little babies. People don't think dogs are little babies, but they treat, then they treat them like little babies. Two-year-old dogs, three-year-old dogs, treat them like little babies. They're tough. They're tough, strong, willful animals when they get into teenage and adult years. Now, proof will be in the pudding. No pain to this dog. Let's see if this dog harasses her again. Let's see if this dog thinks when I go like this and go to grab him, he thinks everything's a big game. Life's a big game. Let's see. Proof will be in the pudding. We have not seen it since then. We saw minutes of harassment from him. Many minutes of harassment that I let go because I was trying to be clear with criteria on humping. Then I changed the criteria. He didn't know the criteria. He just hadn't done it. Then I changed it to harassing her. Then I got some mark and punishes in there for the video. But we're going to see. Go be mean. That's the attitude too. You'll see me in videos go, go do it. Go do the wrong behavior. Unless it's dangerous, dogs can do the wrong behavior. It's okay. And then we'll crack them for doing the wrong behavior and that's how they learn. Here we go. Oh. Was it because, oh. Then look at me. Was my correction due to not smelling her as he goes by? Oh, three second hello. We're good with that. Did you see me? I got ready to clap and then he went, I'm on my way. I'm not saying the behavior's gone. Zero pain, zero treats, zero e collars. Not that you'd use an e collar for this or treats for this. You'd be a crazy person to use treats for this. You'd be insane. To think that reinforcing a dog when they don't do a, ba a bad behavior will fix the bad behavior is clinically cr crazy. Redirection does not reduce, does not let them know what they shouldn't do. It lets them know what they should do, but it's not clear enough. It doesn't work. It works for sits, works for downs, it doesn't work to eliminate behaviors. He's a good boy. Oh my goodness. And none of this means your dog, oh, you hurt your relationship with your dog. No, you don't. You help your relationship with your dog, actually. Your dog respects you. Many people watching this, their dog doesn't respect them. Dog loves them. Dog also jumps on them when they get home. When they're smelling a bush, they say, I'm not coming to you. They're like, who are you, really? You're my mommy, I love you, but I do what I want. Okay, what is our criteria for a correction right now? Psh, they both like to play rough, so one of the dog's 
in being uncomfortable is not going to be a criteria like it is with this one. I don't see either of them doing any. If one dog yelps, we will correct the other dog. So basically, let rough dogs be rough. Let friends be friends. I see energy being released. If I think a fight could start or you think a fight could start, you again use mark and correct. And I might do it just for the fun of it, even though they're not being bad. Who cares? I'm not doing anything bad. Oh, they stopped. But I could show you how mark and correct works with when two dogs are just playing rough. It's the same thing. Hey, grab, grab. But we'll see if it happens. Okay, get ready to watch. Let's say I wanted to stop this because these two dogs fight. And I know I'm loud. Ready? Hey! That dog went away perfectly. You see the golden? He went, oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm going over there. You don't have to go get him when they do that. This dog pretty much went away. Plus, I don't want to take my shoes off and go in there and grab him. Plus, I don't have to. And because I think he got, I think they got the point. Let's see. Hopefully that makes sense. How to reduce any behavior you don't want when it's with two dogs, you know, is this sort of mark and punish technique, but there are certain criteria for it. There's a certain way to do it. There's a certain thing to do. If the dog goes off and goes, oh my God, I'm sorry, you don't have to go get them. If the dog thinks it's a big game, you actually end up correcting them thinking it's a game. So that's what I did with him. I corrected the game part of it. He already, he forgot why I was correcting him. I, I ended up correcting him thinking it's a game. Since then, if I've said, hey, he hasn't gone, oh, it's a big game. All right, that's, that's it, that's it.